I'm Carla Page, and welcome to my program. Happy New Year 2023. We made it. Full of glee in 23. That's my slogan. And this is my very first show out of the gate of 2023, and I'm excited about it. And I'm happy that you've been tuning in to me since 1978. I love you all. You know that. And I could not do this show without you. You know. So my guest this week, and I'm very honored to have her to kick off Black History Month 2023. It's the month of February. It started out as one day. Then we went to a week. And now we have the month of February. And then we go, we segue right into Women's History Month. But I'm going to be introducing a fine lady who I know that you're going to get a lot of information from. Her name is Miss Lacey Wilson, and she's from the Albany Institute of History and Art. And her position is she's the public historian for the Albany African American History Project. And they're located at 125 Washington Avenue, right in the heart of Albany, New York. I welcome you, Lacey. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having me, Carla. It's yeah. great to be here. I'm excited about having you on. I'm happy to be yeah. excited. I'm yeah. excited to be here as well. So I'm going to find out first off uh, about uh, 23 uh, from you because this is, you know, we're, we're going into uh, Black History Month, but we are still beginning the beginning of a year, a new year, uh, um, 2023. So what are your your goals and vision for 2023 before we even say anything else. I mean, did you have a good New Year's going in? And tell, tell us just a little bit about that because I always like to find out from people what they're thinking mm -hmm. in the beginning of the year. Mm -hmm. um, so it was a good New Year. It was my first New Year in Albany. I'm just coming on to getting ready to have my anniversary of my residency in Albany. I'd moved here in the first week of February last year. So I had New Year's in North Carolina last year and now I had it in Albany this year. Um, it was great. I called family. I had black eyed peas and collard greens, the mm -hmm. southern tradition of starting the year off with good luck eating those in particular. Talked to my mom, talked to my brother, and then me and a neighbor had drinks on the stoop and shared some passersbys for a bit before going to sleep. Um, but it was it was nice. I enjoyed it. Um, goals for the new year. I hope to continue to do well on the project, and I know we'll talk more in depth about that as we go on. But I'm also a big reader. I love to read in my personal time. So the goal that I had going into this year that's not professional um, is to read more short stories and poetry this year. Just try to expand the kinds of things that I'm reading. I don't know if um, I, I read a lot of genre fiction for fun. And so I thought maybe some poetry or short stories this year to sort of widen that a bit. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. So now uh, a little bit of your backstory, because your the title that you have is just really remarkable. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to find out a little bit about you coming up and what brought you to Albany. But you actually have a master's degree in museum studies. That's correct. How and why did you go into this? I grew up in I grew up right by Washington D.C. in Silver Spring, Maryland, technically, but I was born in Washington D.C. So I have a lot of memories of with family and classes going to the museums there. And I always liked history. I always loved being able to go to the museum field trips for, I think for a lot of kids are like the best part of some of those classes. And so I went into college and undergrad planning to major in history to get me to museums at some point. Um, so in doing that and researching more about it, I learned about public history through classes there, which is just history for the public, history with the public and conversation with the public, which is tours, museums, documentaries, um, blogs. There's like so many ways that the public interacts with history. I always use a very broad definition when I do that because there's so many ways people can do that. So I, that was my intention. And then I went and got a, um, when I was applying for master's programs, I was fortunate enough to go to University of North Carolina at Greensboro, which has a very fantastic program there that's very like community focused in terms of their public history. They really like to get their students in the community and with these groups to do public history in unique ways. Mm -hmm. And so that's that's where I went for the museum studies program and continued to work in the field since then. So quickly, what do you take up 
in when you're doing just regular college work that would lead you to get a master's in museum studies? What, what were you taking up? So I actually took an introduction to public history course at UMBC, University of Maryland, Baltimore County, where I got my master's, where I got my undergrad. Um, I, uh, but I think before that class was available, I was actively in the summers taking internships at various oh, okay. places. Um, that's, I think that's like the initial start. I was mm-hmm. fortunate enough to take, um, do internship two summers in a row with Smithsonian's traveling exhibition services. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I worked for um, uh, uh, Clifton Mansion, which is a mansion in Baltimore City. Um, did a small exib- traveling exhibit for them about the history of agriculture, or, or agriculture at that park. Um, mm-hmm. and there, and I, I did a lot of internships before I ended up. I did, I did those internships, and then I took that public history course, and then there was an uh, Baltimore City Unconference that where, where people involved in the field mm-hmm. came and talked about and connected about public mm-hmm. history and mm-hmm. museums mm-hmm. in Baltimore City and that connected me a lot of people there and mm-hmm. that I, I would say if you were if this is something you were interested in mm-hmm. pursuing mm-hmm. Um, talk to museums look at historic yes. sites all these things yes. but look for internships volunteer mm-hmm. opportunities mm-hmm. read books there, there's mm-hmm. so many ways to get involved in the field and I think what's exciting about the field is we I'd like to think are very welcoming to like any time you want to slide in mm-hmm. at any point. Like you can look at colleges, you can look at um, uh, certificate programs, you can sure. just, but then we really value the experience. So if mm-hmm. you're interested and in start doing things, I think we're excited to have you. It's nice. Because the Carla Page Show does do so much inspiration for people and helps people to start to say, you know, it's never too late. Your dreams can come true no matter what you want to do. What do you want to do? Mm-hmm. You can get there. Mm-hmm. So if you're just joining us, I'm Carla, and I'm welcoming you so much. I mean, my heart is, oh, my God, is with your heart. My guest this particular show, the very first one for 2023, is Miss Lacey Wilson from the Albany Institute of History and Art. She's at 125 Washington Avenue in Albany, the heart of Albany. And her title is Public historian for the Albany African American History Project. And she's going to be telling us all about what's going on there. So much is happening. I was just there just the other day looking at a display that was uh, was phenomenal. So anyway, please call your friends and let them all know that we're on. So let me ask you this, and then we're going to go right into talking about the Institute. What was the first day like on the job for you in Albany? When you first got there, Mm -hmm. what was that like? So I distinctly remember because I had moved to Albany like a day or two beforehand um, and had moved. There were a lot of boxes still in my apartment, but I was getting ready to walk to work and the... um, uh, the app that I had to show me how I could walk to work took me a longer direction than I thought it was going to. Um, I went in, I met my colleagues, I'm in the curatorial department, so we had our two ca- our head curator and associate curator there um, that, that were showing me around and uh, introducing me to folks in the institute and I was also taking the initiative to connect with them as well. And I think then I spent a lot of time just sort of doing the normal first day of the job thing, mm-hmm. setting up emails and trying to connect with different departments. And well, something I found and have continued to do here at the Institute in my job is I feel like outreach is such an important part of it. Mm-hmm. I am still relatively new to Albany despite all the work that I have been doing, but I'm still, but I, at the time when I started, I was like, I need to figure out who I need to connect with, what organizations exist in Albany, what people exist in Albany that mm-hmm. would be good roots and starting points for me to figure out how I can form this project. Um, did a lot of that, and then I was doing research on black history at the Institute. A good amount of my job is just trying to figure out what we have that relates to that. And I'm my, my portion is very specifically, I'm sure we were going to go into this, but um, 20th and 21st century black history. A lot of that earlier portion, we have another colleague of mine whose focus is on that, digitizing that and transcribing those earlier records. Mine is very much in the rememberable past. People who are still living in those times mm-hmm. and people who rem- remember it and things like that. So that's that. Uh, I was trying to see what exists in our archives related to that, what okay. research I can do on the Institute. I was starting to get to know Albany. Okay. 
Great, great. So I want to start with the Gordon Parks exhibit because that was supposed to have ended on the 31st of January, but it's been extended. And I want to start with that right now, and then we can go in events that took place in the past and other things that you've got going, mm -hmm. and how we as a community can intertwine even more so with you. Mm -hmm. A lot of people do know about the Institute, but I want even more people than the people that watch me to follow you and mm -hmm. follow what you're doing mm -hmm. on a regular basis, okay? Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the wonderful Gordon Parks exhibit. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. So um, we have this fantastic Gordon Parks exhibit. It is a show that traveled here from Wisconsin. Uh, the university that it comes from has slipped my mind in this moment, so I'm sure we'll edit that in later as my hope. Um, but it, um, we had it, um, we put it up in late November, and it has been extended. Its last day will be February 19th. So be sure to come and see that. It's um, specifically Gordon Parks is iconic, illustrious mm. in his career. Oh, yes. So what we have here specifically at the Institute are a number of his photos specifically from his time at Life magazine, mm -hmm. um, which are fantastic and really show a lot of different communities existing in the United States and internationally. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of really fantastic famous stories and figures that you can see there as well mm -hmm. as read our text to find out exactly what words were accompanying them and what stories mm -hmm. these were coming with. It's really fantastic. I, as a, someone who works in a museum, I don't often get as much time to go up be in the galleries as mm -hmm. I would like, but when I do go up to Gordon Parks, people are talking in there. People are, that's, mm -hmm. people are very engaged with what they're seeing, mm -hmm. what things that they remember living through or things mm -hmm. their grandparents have lived through like that conversation is very potent in that space yes. which is exciting to see mm -hmm. um so we have that till again like i said february 19th Good. please make your way down yes. there we'd love to be able to see you we recently got it extended mm -hmm. and we hope to have it as um, we, we're excited to have people mm -hmm. in that space it is so well worth the trip no matter where you come from, I'm telling you, you are going to be amazed at what you see. I took down my group from Ida Yarborough, the Everly Cromwell Community Center in Albany on uh, North Pearl Street. We went recently, and, every, and there were all ages in that group, and everybody was left there. They, we, we left differently from what, the way we came in. Mm -hmm. We all had so much that we were able to... Uh, that we absorbed and was wonderful. What are the hours of the institute? What, what what are the actual hours? I'm sure it's on this paper that I have in front of me. It doesn't appear to be. I want to say we are like nine to five mm -hmm. from, on Wednesdays through Saturdays. We are nine to five on Sundays. I believe we open at noon. Um, but please come by. Check our website for more specifics. We'd love to to have you there. Um, I also encourage you if you have an Albany City Library pass. We mm -hmm. have there are passes there to come and see the institute because it does cost a bit to come in, but we. We are, um, but the library has passes, and we're happy Good. to welcome you through there. Good. And give information. We'll do that right in the beginning, and I want to do it again in the closing, okay, Lacey, how you can be reached. Oh, yeah. So you can reach me at my email, which is wilsonl at albanyinstitute.org. Um, yeah, Wilson L and my name and com phone number are on the staff page at the website um, at the Albany Institute. So if you go there and find staff and contact information, you'll see it there. Um, the phone number is off my mind, but I think you have a card in front of you. Oh, I can. Um, yeah, you, you want it? Go ahead. Oh, yeah, because I did not have my office phone number recognized, memorized. My office number is 518 463 4478, extension 431. Um, so that's the institute number, which is 463 4478, extension 4. Three, one. Okay, that's nice. And for the online people, how can they reach you? Do you want to give that? So, because a lot of people are just they just deal just with the internet. Sure. Well, I encourage you to go to the um, Albany Institute's website. We actually launched a new website recently in the last couple of months. So take your time and explore that space. But you will see um, on, on our blog page information about the Albany African American History Project, which is the project that I am one of the researchers for. So if you go to albanyinstitute.org/blogs/blog, that's blog singular, Albany institute.org slash blog slash collections slash Albany hyphen African hyphen American hyphen history hyphen project. <laughs> I just told it to Carla right before we That's did this. That's a lot. And, I, and it's a lot to remember. <laughs> I will encourage you to go to the website and scroll around and find the Albany African American History Project. You mm -hmm. will be able to see it uh, through one of our tabs, and you'll find more information about mm -hmm. um, think work that I've done there in addition mm -hmm. to joining Carla here on this fantastic opportunity with us. Oh, sure, sure. So what are some of the other things, Lacey, that you have been a part of and, and got started at the Institute? What other, from the past, so that a lot of people probably have been to them, but if someone is just learning about you, 
other stuff that you've done? Sure. So um, I think my job splits into a lot of good uh, collaborations. I think that's something I'm very excited about. When you came the other day, you met our education manager, Mallory, uh, Mallory Schultz, whose name and information is also on our website. And we led that tour for you and your friends the other day. Um, something Mallory and I were excited to do and started late last fall, late last summer was a collaboration with the YouthFX organization. Um, so YouthFX is an organization in Albany that teaches documentary film making and digital media to young people broadly mm -hmm. and when we found out we had Gordon Parks we connected with them to see if they had a photography class that mm -hmm. maybe we could connect with and, they, we, and so together we um, wrote a grant and created this opportunity this um, that we hope to continue with YouthFX um, what it, what we did was um, we had uh, eight ended up being seven students with YouthFX learned about photography learned about Gordon Parks they came to the institute me and Mallory gave them a tour they had free entry to the institute the entire time the project was going to go and further see those photos mm -hmm. when they first came to the tour they had their photos with they had their cameras with them they had just gotten them so they were taking pictures of everything and really engaging with all of those materials which is exciting mm -hmm. but the exciting culmination happened relatively recently when they sent us their photos so the way this program worked is they selected one photo of the many that they took essentially mm -hmm. over their holiday break oh. and then wrote an artist statement to go with that photo so we when we put them up in the museum, we had a um, res opening reception a few weeks ago um, mm -hmm. with these kids, and we were expecting maybe 50 people to come. We had luckily, uh, amazingly, 191 people come and fill the space that you visited just the other day. It's not a large amount of space. To see that many people come and support these local students was fantastic. Great. In addition to that, the picture's amazing. And their mm -hmm. artist statements are so deep, so well thought out. Mm -hmm. Like it was mm -hmm. really exciting to see the pictures that they chose and the yes. pictures that they took and the sure. artistry behind that. But also they thought very intentionally and hard mm -hmm. about why this photo, why mm -hmm. this photo makes sense, in, uh, inspired by Gordon Parks, or thinking about Albany and their mm -hmm. experience with Albany. And they had had, YouthFX was a great partner with us in terms of finding local capital region photographers that they were able to connect with. Yes. Um, and have teach these students and make these mm -hmm. moments happen. And we're, we're trying, we're, we're in conversation right now to try to hopefully extend and yes. do more with YouthFX. That's something that, that I'm particularly proud of that happened yes. relatively recently. And you know what, I did see that and I loved it. What are the ages with that, of, the, of the youth that, were, that we saw at the uh, exhibit uh, that I did to get to see there? I mean, I'm, I looked at it and I'm like, oh my God, this stuff is, this is out of sight. It's top notch photos. These are high school kids, uh, one middle schooler. Um, so the youngest was 14, maybe 13. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, but, um, but I think a majority of them were 15, 16, mm -hmm. all yeah. in local, capital region students That's that youth fx had mm -hmm. put out an application and they applied and they were able to do mm -hmm. it and mm -hmm. it was fantastic That's i something. i i'm i'm ho hopeful that by the that later after um that i'll be able to share with you the video that youth fx is still mm -hmm. editing from the event because okay. the kids in addition to being able to engage with these many people who came to see their work mm -hmm. also gave speeches about it they each gave like a one minute speech about their work and they are also poised and they were also mm -hmm. thinking very deeply about this project yes. and having I, I think one of the things that all of us adults kept saying is like, how cool would it have been if I were in high school and a picture I took was in a museum? Like how, 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 what further could I have done in my life if I had started from a space like that? So I'm, I'm real. that's something I'm really proud of that we did. And then that we tried to, so we started that and writing that grant like late mm -hmm. last summer. Mm -hmm. Kids program started late November. Mm -hmm. The pictures went up. I want to say like the second week of January, mm. and they're oh, they are up essentially about the same amount of time as the Gordon Parks exhibit. Mm -hmm. So I would encourage okay. you to come to the institute to see the Gordon Parks exhibit. But then, if you're curious about local Albany photographers, mm -hmm. that the YouthFX exhibit is going to be up at the institute until February 17th. Okay. So please come by and see both. Mm -hmm. Yes, lovely, mm -hmm. lovely. They, she was. I've got Lacey Wilson here with me this week, and we are kicking off. Black History Month 2023, and we're just kicking off life. And you can be, do, and have anything you want. I'm telling you, you can do it. Don't you let nobody tell you what you can't do, be, or have. We're examples of it, this young lady and I. Yes, we are. So I have got 
to thank you for coming to Ida Yarborough and speaking, you and your coworkers. Mm -hmm. Um, what was it before the holidays? It was before the holidays, it was Thank me you and Hannah. Very much for doing that. We loved it. Everybody is still talking about it. But I want the viewers to know how you and I connected. I'm happy to tell that story, Carla. It was a surprise to me when it happened. Um, so along with many of my duties as the public historian of the Albany African American History Project, I'm often trying to bring things into our collection. And so one of the ways that I've done that and encouraged by our curators is to scroll on eBay to see if there are any press photos from local newspapers that are just up and available. And one of the ones that I was excited to see was of Carla. Um, from, I want to say, the late 1970s, early 1980s. Yeah. I don't remember the specific date. I was trying to find it to bring it today. That was one of the photos that I first submitted to our collections committee to go in a lot for our project. Wow. In particular, it was a, f a fantastic photo of you at the African American Cultural mm -hmm. Festival yes. in Albany. Now, we hadn't met yet, so I was just like, this is a fabulously dressed woman at this fantastic festival that's focused on black history and black mm -hmm. culture. This has to go in the collection. I need it to go in the collection. I need us to purchase it and figure it out. I want to say it was like maybe a month or weeks later that I, in my outreach go to events, was at Mississippi Day. And I recognized you from afar and sat down somewhere to try to scroll through the email on my phone to see if, like, I rec because they'd said your name a couple times. So I wanted to. I was the mistress of ceremonies that day at Mississippi Day. Mm. And I wanted to confirm before I approached you that, like, this is the same person. I didn't, I would hate to have gone up and it would have been like, oh, no, that's not me. That's someone else. I was trying to find the email just to be safe. And then I, I, I caught you, like, coming down mm. off the stage. That's and I'm right. like, hey, um, we've never met, but I just, but this is my job. This is a picture that I brought into the collection relatively recently that's going to be in our archives and our library and I, I'd love to I, and I do still hope to get you down as an oral interview for the project at a later um, later on time um, but and I was also at the time trying to get you on for our um, symphony orchestra convergence program mm -hmm. which you did do but I did. that is that is where we met we met at Mississippi yes, Day yes, I was I'd approach you essentially cold we had never met before mm -hmm. on my email going like I just brought a picture of you into our museum's collection mm -hmm. please let's talk about uh, yeah, And that just made me feel so wonderful and worthy and excited. And just honestly, it just, I, you thank you from the bottom of my heart. And I have worked so hard, so hard. And one day I really want to sit down and talk to you about how hard I've been working, but in a good way. Yeah. In a very good way. No, thank And when you got that picture and said that, that I'm going to be, I'm going to be, I'll be living forever. Mm -hmm. I'm going to live forever. No, thank you, Carla. The work you've done in yeah. this space, in this community, that's why I wanted to have you there, to like have that picture there and also to talk more of, with you and continue to work with you about this project. I think it's just such a testament to the work you've done and the people who help bring you here and the people who support you further on. Like that's a part of Albany black history in general, as well as like specifically in terms of media. It's, it's so, it was so crucial. Thank you for that work that you did and are continuing to do and that I'm able to well. bring it in. And touching people to me, yeah. I feel like sometimes like I am literally an angel. Mm -hmm. I feel like there's a calling on me and there's a mission and a purpose and that I really feel like I'm an angel. And I'm not saying that just to be saying it. I really feel this way. Mm -hmm. Let's do, we, don't, we only have a little bit of time left, and I, we'll have to have you come back to talk about the panel. But I was on a panel discussion there mm -hmm. at the Albany Institute of History and Art with some other people, and that we had, was we wonderful. Done, we'd done that. We'll, we'll talk about it later. But we did. Yeah, work. It was a. Was, I, I uh, want to briefly mention because we had, I had talked to some of these folks earlier today with a. The, this was their a, a convergence project that done with the Albany Symphony. Um, so they had helped sponsor that and help put that together, mm -hmm. and we, we 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 did a fantastic panel. So I'm I'm happy to talk. Come back and talk about. Please that come later. back. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about. And again, our time is running low, and I do want to talk about membership mm. with you, Lacey. And I got to talk to you about how we can help. You. What can we, can we donate anything, items, money? Yeah. And well, how can we help you? So those two things, the membership and what we can do to help you with donations. Yeah, so I'll, I'll start with it's just great to be welcomed into the Albany community, and I love how much excitement everyone has about this project. You can definitely join us for memberships. I would go, encourage you to go to our website and connect with folks there. That's the best way to do it. Um, and in terms of um, funding as well is to go to, our, um, go to our website and connect with folks there in particular. Memberships are available. We have student memberships and much 
much higher levels beyond that. But we, I would encourage you in particular to, um, if you have interesting stories or things that you think would be worthy, like um, the parameters that I have for this project are black history, Albany city limits, and 20th and 21st century black history. So anything earlier than, um, than truly 1900 is not necessarily for me um, at this point in time. I'm hoping the project will expand beyond that later time. We have another, I have another researcher who's doing that research on the end at the moment. But as far as the things I'm looking for, 1900 to now, that's what I'm looking for in particular. Um, any stories, any items, there are a lot of topics still to like further have and discuss. Um, Carla and I had talked about music and radio on the panel that I will come back to talk about. I've been doing research on jazz, we're doing research on railroads and trains and unions and advocacy and politics. I think there's so much in Albany black history further to help explain the places that we are today and the places that we've come from. I'm hoping to, um, so I would, I would encourage you to go on the website and hear more about some of the things that I've done already, as well as to come to many of our upcoming events. Mm -hmm. So we've got black history events coming up that I'd love to see a lot of high attendance at. There's so many. Did you want to quickly go down that list? Before? So I think we have time to have you go down that list. We can. So I believe you said this will be Saturday. So on Saturday from 2 p.m to 3.30, we will have a round table about the impact of Gordon Parks. Well, um, Cliff Oliver is going to be um, leading a round table discussion with other capital region photographers in particular. So if you want to hear more about Gordon Parks, this is a great opportunity to do it. You can see the exhibit and youth FX like right before or right after. There will be a drop in art making the week after on February 11th. Um, please come and explore dioramas and your artistic side. Those I've done a couple of those drop in art makings. They're a great opportunity. As an adult, you don't often get as much time to just explore your creative side and what a great opportunity it is to do that we will have a library open house on february 12th that one is a fantastic opportunity if you're particularly interested in artifacts in particular um, so me and my researcher co-worker trisha and her um, research assistant marissa we're going to have a library open house we're going to pull out a bunch of the things from our archives um, pictures and items that re relate to the research we've been doing so if you've got time and are in albany or just truly could drive down to come and see us from 12 to four, you'll get a chance to come and see these artifacts and discuss things with us in particular. And later that day, Marissa and Tricia will be giving a lecture on black history in our collection. Mm -hmm. So that'll be that same February 12th. That's going to start at two and four. So if you want to come for the lecture, I would get there a bit before two, but we, um, I will be there. And, and so will Tricia and Marissa will be there essentially from 12 to four um, in that okay. space to sort of interact with artifacts and things. Mm -hmm. um, I will also, and then the weekend, after, week after that, on February 19th, I have been doing oral interviews for this project. I'll be doing an oral interview talk back, the first one I've done, um, with uh, Jamila Anderson, um, creator and lead of the Free Fridge Project here in Albany, um, talking about their work in terms of advocacy and the connections they've made, as well as the history of nonprofit work and advocacy in Albany. I'm hoping to have some artifacts out that day, but we will we'll nail that down later. But I'm, I'm excited to talk with Jamila about like the importance of history and the importance of the presentness of that. Um, so that's incredibly exciting. There will be a drop in art making on the next day on Monday. Um, feel, feel free to come by and do that. We're going to have another artistic side, another diorama there. And then on Sunday, February the 26th for a film screening, if you haven't seen it, it's been playing locally a little bit, Searching for Timba 2, mm -hmm. which is um, cre um, created by um, Paul Miller, a U of Albany graduate and adjunct professor. I believe, and he did this fantastic um, documentary about this black settlement space up mm -hmm. in the Adirondacks um, and just the importance of the, it's a fantastic okay. story in, involving settlements and ad, ad, advocacy, abolition, voting mm -hmm. rights, all within New York. And it's it's a really fantastic thing. I would encourage mm -hmm. you to go and look up Searching for Timba 2 to, to, searching for Timba 2 to see the trailer and hear more about it. But um, okay. please come by this month okay. in February. Great. I thank you so much for coming and please come again. You're always welcome. I mean that. And to me, it's just like I feel like I've known you forever. I really have such a kindred spirit with you. Mm -hmm. I want to be able to give out this phone number one more time, and we're wrapping it up now. And again, happy Black History Month. 518-463-4478, extension 431. That's Lacey's extension. And I'm just thankful that you watched us. And please, whatever you do, keep making that love go on the wings. Thank you.